Hi everyone, welcome to another Doug's Lab video. In this video, I'll be generating ammonia gas using a common laboratory method, as well as discussing some other laboratory methods and things to watch out for when using them. My favorite reaction is the reaction of ammonium sulfate and sodium hydroxide to yield ammonia, sodium sulfate, and water. Almost any ammonium salt can work here, um, like ammonium chloride or ammonium nitrate, but I tend to use ammonium sulfate because it's cheaply sold around where I live as a fertilizer, and unlike ammonium nitrate, it's not regulated. Further, the reaction product sodium sulfate is much more soluble in water than the, than the corresponding sodium chloride product would be if I had, say, used uh, ammonium chloride to start with. So, and I can show you why that is important later, but uh, for now, that's what I'll be using today, and I'm going to set up a generator for that. Now, just like I said with this, you can use almost any ammonium salt and uh, metal hydroxide. In this case, this is an alkali or an alkaline earth metal, so calcium, potassium, sodium, to name a few. Those will all work. Um, and again, they all have their, their benefits and drawbacks. Uh, for instance, calcium hydroxide is kind of a bad thing to use with ammonium sulfate because uh, calcium sulfate is really insoluble, and you end up with uh, the type of generator I'm using, a lot of solids in the reaction flask, which tend to hinder the generation of the gas, and it sort of makes the generation sporadic and, and really bad. So um, I'll discuss that later as I'm, as I'm running this, but uh, we'll look into that. Uh, so number two is uh, bubbling or boiling a solution of aqueous ammonia. And this is actually a really nice method. Um, unfortunately though, you need a lot of really big glassware to do it. So you can buy gallons of uh, ammonia at uh, local stores, and made in Canada, in the great state of Michigan. You can buy solutions of ammonia, and those are somewhere between uh, 6 and 10 percent usually. And by boiling that solution, you can force the ammonia out of it. And uh, as long as you have something to capture the water, so like a reflux condenser above the, the heating apparatus for instance, you'll be able to strip most of the water from the ammonia and uh, end up with a stream of fairly dry ammonia. And of course, coupling that with, say, a drying tube will, uh, will further dry that ammonia, and you can use it for a lot of reactions that way as well. And I'll get into some drying tube uh, tips and tricks for ammonia later as well. But uh, that also works, but again, uh, because the ammonia solutions that you start out with are typically very dilute, especially if you're getting them from the grocery store, um, you need big glassware, like a one liter boiling flask, for instance, which not everybody can afford. So the third method, and I will touch on this briefly, I've used this method before, and the problem is I can never really get it to work well. Um, you use a base and urea, and I've got urea, it's sold as a fertilizer, it's extremely cheap, in fact it's cheaper than ammonium sulfate, um, and you mix it with something like sodium hydroxide and it starts evolving ammonia, and the, the problem is I cannot stop this generator from foaming over. So I guess if you can get it to work, then kudos to you, but uh, honestly, I don't ever bother with this one anymore because no matter how much water I add, no matter how clean my flasks are, um, I guess the one thing I haven't tried is recrystallizing my urea, but if I have to recrystallize uh, before I run an ammonia generator, then there's no point in using technical grade products anymore. I might as well just buy the urea, which is super inconvenient and expensive. So this is the reaction I like, and those are some of the reasons why I like it. So we'll set up for this, and then uh, I'll talk about it some more. So I have the reactants here, including 13.2 grams of technical grade ammonium sulfate, just fertilizer, and there's even a little speck of dirt in there I can see, but no matter. I also have 9 grams of sodium hydroxide, and this represents a slight excess, in fact a little bit over 10% excess, which uh, ac accommodates for the general 10% moisture that's typically in uh, commercial samples of sodium hydroxide. So keep that in mind if you use sodium hydroxide from sources that aren't reputable. Uh, mine's drain cleaner. So anyway, uh, you need 30 milliliters of water for every 13.2 grams of ammonium sulfate. You simply pour them together. The solution will get really cold as it dissolves, and it will dissolve eventually. So just give it a small stir. And uh, the second step is in a 250 milliliter round, or in my case a flat bottom flask, doesn't really matter, um, you add the sodium hydroxide before it starts to, it's really hygroscopic, it'll start sticking to the beaker. So I'm going to do that right now. It's helpful if you don't get any in the ground glass joint, but it looks like I'm failing at that a little bit. Alrighty, there it is. You can then set up the ammonia generator. So on top of a hot plate, which you'll need to heat the solution during the later stages of the reaction, uh, you put the flask, in this case the 250 mil with the 9 grams of sodium hydroxide in it, a Claisen adapter, and then on the Claisen adapter we have first a reflux condenser here. This is, happens to be a coil condenser, but any reflux condenser will do. And that'll strip the water out of the ammonia gas, or most of the water. And then on top we have a gas adapter here, which will allow us to take the ammonia gas and put it through whatever we want. And in this case, 
I'm using a really long glass tube here to bubble this through a graduated cylinder full of water and I'm going to make some ammonia solution. In the other socket on the Claisen adapter, we have, in this case, a 250 milliliter pressure equalizing addition funnel. Now, it's important that it's pressure equalizing because otherwise you won't be able to bubble the, uh, or you won't be able to drip the ammonium sulfate solution nearly as effectively, which will give rise to erratic ammonia evolution, and that's very bad for a number of reasons that I'll get into uh, after this thing gets going. If you don't have a pressure equalizing addition funnel, you can make one if you have a vacuum adapter that'll go down here uh, with a, with a take off and you can use a piece of rubber tubing to go to the top and use another one of these gas adapters uh, up here but on the top of this and sort of make your own but I happen to have one and uh, this works just fine. The glass bubbling tube is now inserted into the graduated cylinder in preparation to bubble ammonia into it and its slack is adjusted so it sits nicely on the bottom without tipping over the cylinder and then we can slowly turn the stopcock to allow the ammonium sulfate solution to fall onto the sodium hydroxide and give ammonia. Very slowly, this reaction needs to be started very, very slowly. It's easy to generate too much too quickly. So at first, none of the ammonia is going to dissolve in the water, or at first, none of the gas is going to dissolve in the water because it's primarily air and not ammonia. So we need to wait for the ammonia to purge through the system and then uh, and start dissolving in the water. And you'll be able to tell that uh, based on the size of the bubbles that are breaking at the surface. It's also a good idea at this point to turn on your condenser water. Don't forget to do that. Now that we're starting to get ammonia through, I'm going to turn on the fume hood. Generally you'd start it first, but uh, I'm trying to keep the video quality higher. After an initial induction period, the ammonia production will slowly trail off and you'll need to heat the flask in order to keep it going. About three quarters of the ammonia is still left in the flask, it just needs to be heated to drive it out. So I've now turned the hot plate on, and you can see ammonia production has slowed considerably, but we'll pick back up in a little bit. While we're waiting for the ammonia generator to finish up, and you can see we're getting a nice strong solution of ammonia in here, uh, I'll talk a little bit about drying ammonia further for water sensitive reactions. Now you can typically use a drying tube with ammonia, and that's all good, but the problem is you can't use standard drying reagents with it, like calcium chloride or magnesium sulfate, because ammonia reacts with those. So typically the agent you use is sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, but the problem with them is that uh, they're very, very hygroscopic, and if they do get a little bit wet, they tend to liquefy and that uh, the liquefied desiccant will then run out of your drying tube and potentially into your reaction. So you have to be very careful with that. Adding a little bit of sodium carbonate, or a plug of sodium carbonate between your reaction and a sodium hydroxide tends to help mitigate that, and also I guess helps to further dry it. Just make sure that your sodium carbonate is very, very dry when you do that. I'll also discuss a little bit about suckback. Ammonia tends to be very susceptible to suck back because it's very soluble in the liquids that you tend to bubble it into, especially if you're bubbling it into, to, into an acid like hydrochloric acid or uh, something with a low vapor pressure like sulfuric acid. And that's because uh, the vapor pressure of the solution that it's going into is very, very low. And so that tends to generate a sucking action when the ammonia starts dissolving in it. And you'll, you'll notice that the liquid will start eating the ammonia up into the tube. In fact, you can demonstrate this if you have a test tube full of ammonia and you invert it into some water, you'll notice the water level will climb the test tube until it's completely filled and the ammonia is dissolved in the water. It'll climb, for all intents and purposes, to the top, but it's limited, of course, by the vapor pressure of the solution, which, with a lot of water, is very, very low. So ammonia tends, since it's very soluble in those liquids, to be very susceptible to suck back, and so you should always use a suck back trap when you're using ammonia. In this instance, I didn't, and I had a couple issues with suck back to start with. And you'll notice there's some in this tube here because of that. But uh, it's not really an issue here because I'm not using this for anything. I'm just sort of demonstrating the generator over, uh, over anything else. Also, while we're waiting for this to finish, I'll discuss a little bit about uh, reaction size. So I'm running this on a one-tenth molar scale based on ammonium sulfate, which is a two-tenth scale based on, um, on ammonia. So this, this here, we're producing two-tenths of a mole of ammonia in a 250 milliliter flask. This can safely be scaled up uh, another three times in this flask here, uh, yielding a total of six tenths of, uh, six tenths of a mole of ammonia with a 250 milliliter setup. And that includes the 250 milliliter pressure equalizing addition funnel. So of course with a 500 milliliter flask, you'll end up with uh, 1.2 moles of ammonia, and a one liter flask, you'll end up with 2.4 moles of ammonia, which is fairly efficient as far as ammonia generators go. Another benefit for choosing the reactants that I did is that this flask will be completely liquid by the time the reaction is done. 
And when you cool it back down to room temperature, it's designed that with the solubility of sodium sulfate and the amount of water used, that it will not crystallize. So cleanup is really, really easy. All you have to do is pour this flask out and give it a quick rinse. Other ammonia generators, uh, you'll end up with a solid cake left in the flask, and uh, sometimes it's difficult to scrape out, it's difficult to break up, difficult to dissolve, or uh, worst case, um, some of the reactants can get trapped in that puck of solid, and as you start breaking it up, it'll generate ammonia, which is highly irritating and annoying, and uh, could be dangerous. So this uh, this reaction here, though, is, is designed, you can scale it up to pretty much any scale, and it uh, doesn't foam, and also cleanup is super, super easy. You can see when gas when gas generation starts to taper off, um, it'll start to climb the re the tube here, and so we can simply pull it out, and this is just about done. So we'll pull this out and leave this tube in a safe place somewhere in the fume hood, so that we can pull the excess ammonia out and turn off the hot plate. Um, also indicating that the reaction is over is the um, the appearance of vapor here in the coil condenser here, and we're slowly getting drips of water out of there now, so I know that we're starting to reflux. So here's our yield. It's approximately well, just over 40 milliliters of a fairly concentrated solution of ammonia. I could take a uh, specific gravity of this and get, um, get a fairly reasonable estimate of the concentration. I could also get it by analysis with, say, a tetraamine copper salt or something like that. Um, I did notice there's some flocculent material here uh, collecting near the bottom. I don't know if you can see that which is kind of concerning because uh, the water that was in this graduate cylinder, which was supposedly clean, uh, the water was well water uh, from my house. So I'm not sure if it's complexing with some, uh, with some ions in the soil that are uh, pulling out of my well or what. So maybe I'll investigate that later as a different video, but interesting. Anyway, like I mentioned earlier, the ammonia generator is very easy to clean up. You can see that it's uh, completely liquid at the moment and will remain liquid down to room temperature. Uh, you'll have to take my word for that. Uh, so, cleanup is very easy. You just pour it out, give it a quick rinse, and it's ready to go again. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, an ammonia generator in a nutshell. And I, I'll be using ammonia in many, many upcoming videos. It's a very common reagent, especially its solutions in water and uh, alcohols, and also liquid ammonia. So, there you go. If you liked this video, and I hope you did, please click the like button, and uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thank you very much for watching.